10 in Auto Electronics here. Today we're taking apart a Fitbit Charge HR. Process should be the same on both. Um, this is the battery replacement guide, if you will. Um, so first you're going to need um, a kit like this. I got this one at Harbor Freight. Um, first of all, the screws in the Fitbit are Torx. And the smallest one in this kit is a T4 Torx. And that's um, that's still too big. So it's either a T3, T2, or T1, which this does not have. You're going to have to order those because nobody carries that small of torque bits. Now, it also has a size 1 flathead um, bit. And that's right here. This will work. Um, be careful, though, because this can easily strip the screws out. Uh, if they're not in there too tight, or if the Fitbit's never been opened, this should work fine. Um, but if you have problems, you should probably order a T12 or a T3 to do it the correct way. So the first step <coughs> is looking at the Fitbit here. This is the heart rate monitor here. Um, this tiny little hole you see is for the barometric pressure sensor. This is This assists with counting um, steps or floors. Um, this, this senses the altitude and barometric pressure. So when we waterproof this, uh, this is one of the holes you have to plug up. So first step, there's going to be four screws, one, two, three, four here. It shouldn't take a lot of pressure or um, anything. You'll have to push downward give it some force down while you're unscrewing it. Okay, all the screws now are loose. This has actually been taken apart before. So it's going to be easier than a one that hasn't. So those are your four screws. Keep those aside. Next, you'll need a small flathead, something like this that you can pry in between here and pop the center section out. So the easiest way is to start on one side and uh, gently pull up and eventually this will pop out of the housing. It's clipped towards the bottom. It has small clips and then it also these two, the button on this side and then the other side are actually locked into the the band itself so be careful not to break those off and yeah, like I said this one came out pretty easily because it was already out before uh, but sometimes they're in there pretty tight and uh, just take your time work your way around this this in between the um, the band and the unit itself and just eventually you'll hear a pop and it'll it'll come out of here okay and then there's two more screws right here, one here and one here. After those are removed, um, the next part of the video will show the actual battery replacement. But for now, we're going to cover the waterproofing section. Um, what I found worked is something like this, available anywhere at a hardware store or um, Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, things of that nature. Just silicone glue, waterproof, airtight, clear. First thing I did got another one here is this hole right here you can see it's filled up with silicone now I haven't noticed any real difference in step accumulation with this filled um, so take this out and you'll see the hole let me see if I can get something small enough it's hard to see, but you can. This pick goes through the hole, and you can see it through the other side there. You can actually, yeah, you can see right there, the white, and then the dark. So, what I did was pretty much put some silicone here and use your finger and push it into the hole, and do that three, maybe two, three, or four times. And you'll, if you look on this side, you'll see a, a little, like a mound or a blob of silicone. That's when you know you're good to go, and you can leave that alone. The next step is to 
I basically you coat um, everything where I'm showing you with the pick. You don't want any silicone down in this area or, or not on the screen, but just along this ridge where the, the, the Fitbit actually sits in. So this ridge you want to silicone good. You can even silicone in here, the screw area, all along here, all over this side. Fill that up and you can use your finger to spread it out. And then the other areas you want to get are right in here. This already is kind of waterproofed because the button, it's like a piece of um, rubber and the button pushes through the rubber and the rubber pushes the button on the unit. So you can, I would add some more silicone, especially in between the, the screen here at the bottom because water can get in there and then along the sides. There's going to be no harm if you fill this up with silicone, so go ahead and do that. Same with the other side here. Fill this all up with silicone so you get a nice tight seal. Once that's all done and you've rinsed, you put in your new battery, then um, you know pretty much just push this back in place. Watch the button, make sure it doesn't get caught when you're pushing it in. Sometimes you have to pry it outward like that and push it back in. Squeeze it nice and tight. Get the screws back in right away and then you can either put like a rubber band or a clamp around this to make sure it's squeezed tightly for 24 hours or so so the silicone can set. Now, with that said, after this one was waterproofed, I took this um, to a water park, uh, river, lake, underwater, I went swimming and it performed flawlessly. It hasn't, there haven't been any issues. Prior to the doing this, I had one that failed uh, almost immediately in water after swimming. Um, but I've spent hours, this has been underwater for hours, and it, it performs flawlessly. So, any questions, let us know. Obviously, we can't guarantee this will be waterproof for you, um, but I've had amazing success with, um, with this waterproof, just basically with silicone. If you're not comfortable doing this, we can repair your battery for you for free. We can waterproof it for you for free. Um, well, not for free, but in addition to the battery purchase or another service, um, you know, if we're taking it apart anyways, we can definitely work with you on price as far as what you need done. Um, they're not too expensive to find used ones. You're generally 50 to 100 bucks. You can probably find a good working one. Um, our batteries are 20 bucks. If you buy a used Fitbit, it's going to have probably a bad battery or old battery anyways, so um, it's really better just to buy a brand new battery. And then if you're taking it apart, if you want to waterproof it also, do so at the same time. But um, that's it. Um, the next part of the video, you'll see the actual battery replacement. And if you have any questions in the meantime, just uh, look us up and send us a message. Thanks. All right, in part two of the video, we will replace the battery. The screws have all been removed. There's two more right here once you remove this from the band. So you'll have one here and one here. Once that's done, a couple things you have to deal with. First, this is the, um, the little vibrator, not the battery, like some people might think. Um, this will fall straight straight out of here and you'll need to be careful because it's there's a, a ribbon that attaches the main board to the heart rate monitor on the bottom and a lot of times so here's the battery you can see on the bottom this battery is going to be stuck to this board with adhesive and what you need to worry about is not ripping this right off you have to gently work it off of here because if you rip this up battery right off you're gonna you, you may pull these ribbons off of the board and those are just stuck on there so you have to be careful and I would say put something in between this board and the battery and just work it out on both sides until it just it's loose and comes out so once you get to this point now here's the battery. So usually 
it won't be on or it won't be working at this point, but if it still has a charge, if it still works, always make sure to disconnect the battery before doing any soldering. So you can just cut the wire, cut the black first or the red, doesn't really matter. And at this point you can get rid of the old battery, just throw it away. Now, we'll probably need to add some solder. I'll just remove these old pieces. Like that. So we have a fresh slate. And what you should do is just add a little bit of solder. So you have something to attach the new battery to. You'll see on the board too there's a little plus sign, it's marked. So you know which way. I actually don't know because it's right in the middle of the two. So just keep in mind that it's the same orientation as the one on top. So the red is going to be on the inside and the negative is going to be on the outside. Okay. So here's our new battery. You want to cut the leads to match the old one. And if you want a little bit extra, that's fine. We'll give that a shot. And you can either strip these leads or you could use a soldering iron, I suppose, if you wanted to just melt the plastic. Because if you try stripping it, you might cut the wire because it's so thin. You don't need much, just a little, little bit of exposed wire. Okay. Now you want to add solder to the wire that you just stripped, like so. And now we're going to attach to the board. It doesn't really matter what side you do first, just whatever one is easier. It's a little bit difficult with only two hands. And you can already see it flashed, so it turned on. Okay. Now the battery, just put it exactly how the old one was, fold it over the back, like so. Put this back in here, put your little buzzer back. And I'll probably have to hold this down to turn it on. There you go. These batteries come approximately 25% charged or so, um, so it, it should work the first time you do it. And uh, these typically last between four and six days, so if you just left this on uh, a shelf somewhere, it would probably last five days. If you're using it more or using all-day sync or other options, it might drain quicker. But typically four to six days will be a good amount that you can get out of this with a new battery.